Liking Spider Man. Not really. It's just me, Jim Sterling. Although I am known for being a little bit negative sometimes. Not seeing the positivity in things. There's a good reason for that. Sort of three good reasons for that. And we're going to talk about them today because, you know, the whole virus thing's still going on. Literally nothing's happening except GameStop is continuing to be evil, not evil, greedy, and evil a little bit. Now today's video is not to blame or point fingers. It's just an explanation of things from a creative's perspective, so that maybe you understand where my uh, entitled, snooty, shitty attitude comes from. It's not my fault. Nothing is my fault. I never do anything wrong. It's everybody else's fault. While I agree with most of your opinions, you don't do enough positive gymquisitions. I'd love to see a positive and uplifting Sterling video. He really needs to give his poor butt a rest. Do you even enjoy anything fully, Jim? <laughs> Comments and messages like these occur on a pretty regular basis. Sometimes they come from people who actually mean it, who genuinely want to see more positive content on the internet internet and feel like we need a break from cynicism, pessimism and disappointment. Yet sometimes these comments come from people who feel uncomfortable about seeing a corporate product they like get criticised and hide behind the thin veil of wanting positive content to express that discomfort. Whether genuine or not however, if you follow me on Twitter or have the misfortune of knowing me in real life, you'll know I bring up and often whine about these comments fairly regularly. What What's bitterly funny about at least half of these comments is that they often come directly after I've done a positive video on something. A positive video that, statistically, only half of the audience watched. You'll note that I often point this out when asked if I ever like anything, if I ever praise anything, if I ever so much as smile. In some circles, I have the reputation of a person who doesn't even like video games, who doesn't enjoy the medium or the art form or the product or whatever you want to call it, and to be fair, literally all video games and the people who play them are trash. But do I not like a single video game? Do I only post a negativity? Far from it, my friends. Unfortunately, y'all just don't give a shit. Some of you say you do, some of you do mean it, but when a commenter asks if I ever like something, literally a day after I published a video about something I like, I have to question the sincerity of the sentiment. Clearly they weren't looking hard enough if they've demanded content that I provided less than 24 hours before they demanded it, and it certainly stings when you've published a video, it performs half as well as you want it to, and then the next day someone quite often rudely asks why I don't do the videos they literally didn't fuck watch. Now, full admission, this channel skews negative by design, I won't deny that. This show is rarely bright and cheerful, though it still strives to be funny and entertaining, and every so often it almost is. But the Jimquisition's main concern is holding to account an industry with an habitual aversion to accountability. The mainstream so-called AAA game industry. An industry controlled almost entirely by liars, manipulators and predators. An industry that has systematically stripped away the creativity and art from a creatively artistic medium, turning games into embarrassing theme parks where everything has an additional cost to pad out the shallow core product. There's not much room for positivity there. People want a break, they want some diversity. At least I've been told, and I've always tried to give praise, huge praise, for things that have deserved it. Every year, for example, we do the Jimquisition Awards, where I look at the five very best games from both the mainstream and more obscure markets and hold them in equal esteem while describing why I loved them and why I feel they represent the best of what the year had to offer. And true to form, it gets roughly half the views of the video that traditionally follows the top 10 shittiest games of the year. The positive 
video typically gets around 500,000 views, while the shittiest typically gets a million, except this past year's one, because my YouTube channel is pretty much fucking buried at this point, and I'm so very, very, very... Definitely no. Positively no. Decidedly no. Uh-uh. It's not all on the audience. YouTube itself is dog shit to masquerading as a business, and its platform is pretty much run by robots that have no fucking idea what they're doing. On YouTube, and increasingly on other media platforms, the algorithm determines all. Google, like many tech companies that seek to eliminate the humanity from everything they do, uses an eldritch amalgamation of data that it's collecting literally every second of every day about your viewing habits, content performance, and of course how much money shit's making. YouTube's algorithm explicitly pushes negative content and has sometimes done so with disastrous, dangerous results. For example, absolutely batshit right-wing conspiracy theories have notoriously performed exceptionally well, with YouTube's algorithm merrily pushing videos claiming that mass shootings like Sandy Hook were a hoax. In fact, the algorithm so effectively rewards hatred that entire channels dedicated to inter-channel drama or just straight-up harassing people make for an incredibly lucrative cottage industry. Scaremongering, personal attacks, seething hatred of individuals, racism, sexism, transphobia, homophobia, all are exceptionally popular, all pushed by an algorithm that has all the personal and professional data in the world and not one tiny shred of understanding of any of it. Because it's a fucking algorithm, it's a set of numerical rules, it doesn't grasp the concept of context, it can't determine the difference between fact and fiction, and it doesn't respect diversity in content, it's just a process, it's not a person. And isn't that just entertainment media now? A process. Numbers. Data and no friggin' humanity. One issue with the audience and algorithm compounding each other is that once your channel becomes known for one single type of content, it's next to impossible, or at least excruciatingly improbable, that you can get away with trying anything else. This is a fact lamented often by Minecraft or Fortnite YouTubers who attempt to branch out and find that doing so tanks their views. Once your channel is slotted into its one focused and neat little pigeonhole, that's pretty much it. That's what you are now. Don't talk about wrestling on Twitter, Jim, just talk about video games. Fuck off. You're a Minecraft channel. You do Minecraft stuff. Are you not doing Minecraft stuff anymore? Well, fuck you. Hell, sometimes I've caught heat for not doing these videos in the usual hat and glasses and tie combination, which we've not been doing lately because, well, the whole world's completely fucked. Some people feel antsy if they don't get that soothing, healing, guiding, thank God for me at the end of every episode. People like the familiar, they like the predictable, they like to see the same things. How else do you account for the fast show's popularity? or indeed the popularity of anything, with a strict formula and repeated catchphrases. I like the fast show, I, I did in the 90s. They're all on daily motion now. Of course, the, the picture quality is to fuck, because it was never, you know, HD'd up or anything, but it's all there, you know. Scorchio, uh, uh, other jokes from the show. Anyway, this pigeonholing of channels is partially on the algorithm as it looks at what type of content you do and pushes the stuff with the best chance of being popular to the exclusion of all else. This means that if you're known for Minecraft videos, YouTube will push your Minecraft videos and ignore or in the worst cases actively fucking bury anything else you want to do. But to just blame the algorithm here is to ignore the fact that people do want their content on YouTube to be familiar. They can claim otherwise, but the data that the algorithm uses comes from somewhere. And it's a truth as old as time that negativity sells more than positivity. What is it they say? A customer will typically tell four to six people about a positive experience and nine to 15 about a negative one. The numbers and exact phrasing changes over the years, but the data suggests that people engage more with the negative than the positive. And on a platform that's all about engagement, hell, in an era of civilization that's all about engagement, it's small wonder why the rage and the depression does so well. It's not 
not like I don't have receipts here. In fact, I've been collecting receipts for just this occasion, an occasion where literally nothing else is happening, so I might as well throw a pity party for myself and moan and complain about the very people who are crucial to the support of my work. Last year, when there seemed to be a bizarre rush of people in my comments complaining about the lack of positive content directly after I published positive content, I started saving the analytics produced after the publication of those aforementioned positive videos. Can't say it paints a particularly encouraging picture. Here are some games I liked and produced the positive content on that people say I never do. The Blair Witch Project, 35% fewer views than normal, and as YouTube notes, this isn't just about them not pushing it. Grim fact is, when given the chance, distinctly fewer people chose to watch an appreciative video about a surprisingly decent horror game. Apparently, I was in the minority of people who dug Man of Medan, but regardless, my praise for it reached 43% fewer people, and those it did reach couldn't be fucked to stick around. Gears 5 was a real shocker. Even when I like a game, if it's a big AAA title, it'll still get a bit of a bump above the average just because it's a big AAA game. But as you can see, my enjoyment of the game simply didn't engage. It just wasn't engaging. Nor was my glowing recommendation for Children of Mortar, boasting as it does a 59% reduction in views. For those out there regularly ordering me to do more videos on good indie games, this is the very typical result. Ah, Disco Elysium. Due to go down in history as one of the greatest games of all time, at least people who watched my video about it stuck around longer, but otherwise... <laughs> Oh, here's a video I did about Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order selling well and thus demonstrating that single player games can still succeed. Good news, promising news, news in an industry where good news is hard to come by sometimes. Good news, like people told me they wanted me to share. Respawn's promising Star Wars game was a success. It certainly succeeded better than this video. And here, here is a video of me dumping on Bethesda. And again, and again, for everyone who complains that I shit on Bethesda too much, that I bang on about Fallout 76 all the time, well, you know, you're not wrong. You're not wrong at all. I bang on about Bethesda's incredible lack of competence all the time. I understand why some people would be sick of it. And yet, and yet, you fucking eat it up every single day. Time. Which you should, by the way, it's very entertaining. I mean, I wouldn't do it so much if I wasn't amused by it. But let's stop pretending it's boring until people demonstrate they're actually bored of it. And then there are the Jimquisitions where I push the boat out, try to do some investigation, a little bit of that journalism people sometimes say they want me to do. Some of my best work last year, the stuff I'm most proud of, failed to get any traction. At best, matching the average views of a regular, unassuming episode. Fear and Fury, How the Rockstar Sausage is Made was a product of interviews, information, corroboration, and a passion to hold Rockstar responsible for its horrible corporate culture. Didn't move the needle an inch, and despite Rockstar promising to comment on it, Rockstar never bothered in the end because all it learned from my video was that it wasn't going to get shared, it wasn't going to get published on game blogs, it wasn't going to reach a wide audience, it was just going to do business as usual, so Rockstar itself might as well do business as usual. Now no one, not one of you, no matter how hard I worked on a video, no matter what I'm doing to give people what they say they want, none of you owe me views. N none of you owe me your eyeballs. But at the same time, I hope you can appreciate why this is so frustrating as a content producer. I mean, going back to that Rockstar video, I published that during a period where a number of people were giving me a lot of stick for talking too much about the same old shit, calling it boring and uninspiring. One person who I liked said I was fucking lazy, and they said I should talk about things other than Fallout 76. So I did that Rockstar video, it didn't get any traction, and then and the very next week I made a point of doing everything I was told people are sick of me doing and published a post-nuclear post-mortem of Fallout 76. 
over a million views. When I've complained about this stuff before, some folks ask me if it means I do everything just for the views, or they'll ask why I even care since the show's supported on Patreon anyway and doesn't need ad revenue. Now, if I did stuff just for the views, I would stop praising games altogether. I would stop trying to post positive stuff entirely. And as far as ad revenue goes, even though this show's supported on Patreon, views are still an important business metric for anybody producing content designed to be, well, viewed. In fact, for YouTubers, pretty much the only useful data we have are viewing figures. It's the only measurement we have for success. So when something we produce gets fewer views, the only message we've gotten is that such content is not how our channel succeeds. And this is why we don't have a Gitter Room Man 2. I give big publishers a lot of shit, but one thing I can't fault them for is that if people aren't buying something, they're probably not gonna keep making that thing. And it's not just a business thing, it's a morale thing as well. If you're making content for an audience, you're presumably doing it so people want to see it. We're not all Simon Munnery, and it's pretty demoralizing to see work you put extra effort into get ignored. It's disappointing when you've been told people are bored of your work, so you switch it up and it doesn't interest people because they're so invested in the stuff you've been told is boring. One of my most critically acclaimed videos is the political agenda of Dark Souls. Incidentally, it's one of the videos I'm most proud of. It's the kind of thematic analysis I hadn't done in years. We pushed the boat out in terms of production and editing. We reached out to Dark Souls lore expert Varty Vidya. I love that video, and in terms of direct feedback, I've had more fan mail off the back of that one than anything else. And yet, by all usable metrics at the time, it was an abject failure. Over time, its views have reached about average for the Jimquisition, but at publication, its performance was tepid at best and had to claw its way to average. Worse than that, it did in fact lead to not just a noticeable drop in subscribers, but a drop in patrons as well. My subscriber count and my direct source of income took a hit as a result of a video many viewers said I should do more of. So view-wise, it did nothing. Subscriber-wise, it turned people off. Patron-wise, it caused people to support the show less. What does that tell me as a content creator? It tells me the video failed, and if I did more of them, I'd be doing so at my own literal cost. And it's not your fault. You like what you like, and I'd be lying if I said I didn't like doing the thing I do so well. I'm an angry, bitter man whose soul is as small as his body is big. I shout, I moan, I criticize, I do videos on the same subject over and over because the problems don't change so I don't stop pointing out the problems. Like a dog with a bone, I never let go of issues to the point where I almost parody myself, banging on about loot boxes, microtransactions, and other forms of abusive monetization. I treat the 500th story about crunch or addiction or corporate exploitation as if it's it's the first story about crunch or addiction or corporate exploitation. I reiterate, I repeat, I carp and complain and condemn and castigate, and I do it because I'm fucking good at it. I'm fucking right to do it, and more importantly than all that, and I've got the data to back it up, you fucking love it. Now as I've tried to stress, none of this is to say that I don't do or won't do anything positively. I mean, as I speak, uh, I've just recorded a bunch of footage for Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, which the embargo broke on that today. I have a video on that going up tomorrow. It's very good. It's very fucking good, and it's very fucking scary. But you can learn all about that tomorrow, can't you? Won't you? It'll be right there for you to watch. Right there. You don't have to, but it's... But it's there, it's right there. Thank God for me. I laugh me a laugh, grin me a grin And then I know that we can win Dance me a dance, joke me a joke And blow the clouds away You gotta play me a tune I'll sing me a song